In My Mug episode 334 on Monday the 6th of April 2015. I am your wonderful host Stephen Layton and I am wonderful. Um, welcome to my mug. <laughs> and welcome to the news. Dun, 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 dun. And next week's In My Mug will, will be recorded at the US of A during the World Barista Championship. Um, and next week's coffee is something a little special uh, as it's going to be featured on the brew bar in Seattle at said WBC. Um, but you don't have to go to the States to try it. You can just subscribe and taste it with us. So um, very much looking forward to next week's coffee. Although this week's coffee is equally as amazing. Um, next week's um, something a little bit special. And we'll also be releasing another coffee uh, from the same farm that again is a little special. Won't be any in my mug though. Um, um, lots of great feedback about uh, last week's uh, coffee and um, you all seem to absolutely adore it um, but I did receive quite a bit of disappointment about the matte bit um, I promise you I solemnly promise this week's will more than make up for last week's it's pretty damn special um, this week's in my mug is it features some drone action so um, yes go uh, wait here and it will come in a moment um, in my mug has moved hosts, as in the podcast. So the RSS feed has changed. Um, I've cleaned up all the videos as well. I've done a whole heap of stuff. There's a new player, and uh, there's also an in my mug audio. So if you go to iTunes and search for in my mug, there'll be in my mug and in my mug audio, um, and uh, it's going to have its own feed. Um, so if you go to, uh, you can watch what through inmymug.com on the screen. You can subscribe through the RSS feed, which is inmymug.podbean.com, or or you can go to inmymugaudio.podbean.com, um, or you can subscribe in iTunes and do all the wonderful things there. Do it, do it now. You should subscribe so you get it delivered to you all the time. Um, so yes, do, definitely do that. And that was the news. Um, and this week is it's focus on, um, and this week we're going to focus on the pulp natural process. So pulp natural is uh, where the cherry, cherry on the tree, pick the cherry off the tree, you have to take the cherry off. Uh, or with natural you can leave it to dry in the cherry. Uh, and when you take it out, you've got a sticky mucilage that's left on the seed. Now you can either wash that, washed coffee, or you can leave that to dry on raised beds and that will give you, um, tends to give more body, more sweetness than the washed um, and a little less acidity than the washed. The natural will give you more body, kind of bigger, bolder flavours than the pulp natural and the washed. They all are completely different. Now we do have some video guides on uh, processing. Remember we showed the pulp natural here a few weeks back. Um, but if you go to uh, the resources part of our website um, and there is uh, processing videos there, I'm going to pop a link on the screen now so you can follow that. Um, so um, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's pretty much pulp natural. Um, I know I'm kind of covering these things again, but there's always new people diving into these and I think it's important that we carry on. Um, so this week's coffee comes from, uh, I'm going to get this wrong, Juan Aquera family, um, who started growing coffee in the highlands of southern Minas Gerais 150 years ago. Um, the current owner is Tulio. Um, Tulio is a legend. Um, I got to go and spend some time with Julio in, the, in June this year during the World Cup. Um, um, I managed to watch the Brazil game, or Brazil game with him as well on the TV, um, and we uh, we had a few beers and really enjoyed his company. But also, Tulio came to see us um, the previous year, so we're going to go back in time to Julio telling us about the farm, and he'll appear here. So we are back, and we've got another special guest. How amazing is this? We've had these special guests coming on recently. Um, tell us who you are and a little bit about the farm. So. I am Tulio from Carmo State Farm in south of Minas, Minas Gerais in Brazil. Uh, the region is the Mantiqueira region and uh, the region is very high quality coffee yeah. with some cup of excellence and some early contest. And the farm is a family farm and we I'm running it from 76 until now. Okay. And uh, that's it. And and how much coffee are you growing on the farm? 
around 200 hectares of yeah. coffee. And how many bags would that be around about? Around 70. Thousand bags. So seventy thousand bags again. Another huge farm, and this is a thing in Brazil that the farms are often very big, aren't they? They in south of Minas, this kind of farm is considered big. Yes. In other regions, not so big. It's it's crazy. I think it's seventy thousand bags, and I just go, that's so much coffee. <laughs> um, what varietals do you have on the farm? Because I know that we have the yellow bourbon, yellow catuai, yellow catucai, some. Um, cat uh, Ikatu and Mundo Novo. Okay, so Yellow Bourbon and Minas for me are two things that go very well together. Yes. The Yellow Bourbon is, um, well actually I'm not going to say, what do you think the difference is between the Yellow Bourbon and the Red Bourbons when you come to cup them and taste them? They say that uh, Yellow Bourbon tastes a little bit better. It's a little bit sweeter. Yes. I think it's a little bit more defined and it's a little bit cleaner um, and I, and particularly in Minas Gerais and particularly in um, uh, Pulp Natural. I find that Yellow Bourbon and Pulp Natural for me are that marriage that it's just two perfect things coming together for them. Exactly. Um, so on the farm, do you sell all of your coffee as specialty or do you have some that is specialty and some that you sell? No. About uh, half percent of the, the coffee that we produce is on the specialty. The other 50% because we have the small beans, we have the beans from the ground, we have some green beans. So this is really important, guys. Like this is this is where a good difference between a good producer and a, and a producer that just wants to make money. Some people will try and say everything's specialty, no. and no farm can produce a hundred percent specialty. Exactly. Um, it there is always going to be some coffee that isn't as amazing as the other coffees because of the terrain, because of the varietal, because of something that happened on the farm that year. You know. It's, exactly. Um, and this is something that's kind of like, go, okay, I'm going to sort this out as something that's going to be for that market, and this is going to be for another market, and, and it's really interesting. And on these big farms in Brazil, I think it's even more important that you know uh, your farm brand name doesn't get associated with that coffee that isn't so good. You know, you, yes, the yeah. associated the name of a farm, specific farm, farm state. Yes, exactly. State. So, uh, tell, you, was, you mentioned earlier about Cup of Excellence and, and, and the Illy competitions. When, when, when did you get the Cup of Excellence award? In what year was that? Uh, in this region, Mantiquero region, yep. is now it's beginning a controlé region. Yeah. Um, like the wines yes. regions. So like the appellations that you see in wines, you, you, see, exactly. you see starting to happen in Brazil. Um, and and like, do you know what? Like we deal with lots of coffee producers. Brazil is always the most professional. Like you guys know how to market coffee, you know how to find the good coffees, and also I think a lot of that comes from you were the first country to have Cup of Excellence as well, weren't you? So to yes. find that quality back in ninety nine, ninety nine, the first one Cup of Excellence happened in Brazil, and everybody said in ninety nine it's crazy. Like yeah, what? Why are you going to pay one dollar twenty for coffees in Cup of Excellence yeah. when you can go and buy them for like at the time the market was rock bottom, wasn't it? And yes. yeah, so you know they're like Brazil has always had this professional approach to finding amazing coffee and and building relationships. Uh, and it's great that you and Aldolfo have come across and spent some time with us today and and kind of come to see our roastery. I, I've been like a kid in a sweet shop. It's been great looking after these guys. So, uh, listen, thank you very much for joining us on camera. <laughs> he was good, wasn't he? He was much better than me telling you about it. So the numbers, the farm is Carmo Estate, uh, altitude 950 to 1200 meters above sea level. This is a Bourbon varietal that has been put naturally processed, um, grown by Julio Juan Cuera. Um, the nearest city is Heladora. Uh, it's in Minas Gerais, uh, in the country of Brazil. And the bit you've been waiting for, now it is time for the amazing, amazing map bit. Hello, here we are again, up, up and away. And um, yeah, going to a rather large country today, but uh, across the Atlantic to South America, not Central America, of course. And um, 
Yeah, South America, a huge continent and dominated by one huge country. Um, definitely the, the daddy of all countries, Brazil. It's just humongous. You cannot understand how big it is until you start driving in it. And I drove what is an inch on that map and it took me nine hours. Um, but we're going to look into some more detail here. So Brazil has the 10th largest railway network in the world and needs a much, much larger one. It's um, it's something I always thought that Brazil could benefit from, was definitely having more railways. Uh, lots of them were ripped up and actually don't exist anymore. You see, it's just topical, topical, topical. Um, but we're going down to Brazil, Fazenda Carmo, which is this week's coffee. And like, I'm not going to say this is kind of close coordinates. This is exact coordinates. This is the best coordinates you've ever seen on a map bit. Because I was there. I was there up in the sky. Look. That's me driving the drone. Um, and that is the exact spot that you are looking at where that flag is dropped down. So you've got drying patios there. You can see me on the drying patios. I'll, I'll, uh, I, if I could make myself wave in the past, I would. Um, but we've got some great shots here of the coffee. Now, lots of the farms in Brazil are just manicured like this because they need to be. They need to be well organised. Um, so the lowest point is the Atlantic Ocean, of course, and the highest point, 3,014 metres. Not massively high. One thing Brazil is not blessed with is altitude, but what it is blessed with is lots of land at a reasonable altitude of 900 to 1,300 metres above sea level. Tends to be kind of pretty much the norm. This is like me driving the drone again, isn't it? Slightly less wobbly, I guess. Um, but here's some of the photos I took while I was at Carmo this year. Oh, I miss my red hair. My red hair rocked. I had the best red hair. Um, and that's me with Stephen, the importer, and, uh, and, the, and the owner there. And we're, uh, yeah, rocking our, rocking our hats and hair. Um, and that was the wonderful map bit. It was a good one. I like it when they're good ones. Um, yeah, no, I think that's a really good map bit. We've got some really great detail there. And uh, I loved flying the drone uh, over Julio's farm. Um, so it is now time for Roland's Daft Fact. And I've been a bit disappointed in his efforts of late. So I really hope he puts a bit more work in this week. The name Brazil comes from the tree Brazil wood. Sao Paulo is the biggest city in Brazil, but isn't the capital, that's Brasilia. And also, did you know that Brazil is the only country to speak Portuguese in South America? Is that good enough for you, Leighton? I like it when he gets a bit angsty with me. Yes, that was good enough, Roland. Much better. Um, interesting fact. I didn't know Brazil was named after a tree and until Roland told us. Or I looked it up on the internet. Um, anyway, um, time to wrap you on pause. Go make delicious and tasty coffee. Be back with you in just a moment. Okay, so remember I was talking about the Port Natural and the focus on. Port Natural, for me, makes the best espressos because you get that stickiness, you get that sweetness, you get lots of lots of body but not too much. You still get some acidity but not too much. And with Brazils, Brazils are perfect espresso coffees. And in this espresso, that gooey, sticky loveliness is there. You get beautiful toffee, like sweet, thick, sticky toffee. That to me is a great espresso. And if you're gonna to say to me, brew that one way, it's gonna be there. But the other bonus of Pulp Natural is in milk. So in milk, it's powerful, powerful enough to come through the coffee, but it doesn't get drowned by um, acidity. It doesn't get too much body. You don't get that overly funkiness coming through. It works really well in there actually. That sweetness of the toffee, working with the sweetness of the milk. You know, milk is a great way of sweetening something. Something that's already sweet is just gonna be sweeter. And I've yet to find anybody that goes, oh, I don't like sweet things, you know? Yes, we can have a preference for savory, but do you dislike sweetness? Rarely. Um, I think that's delicious. 
And finally, the brood. Now, one of the bits of feedback I got that I'm always using the Chemex, and there's a reason for that. I am the king of Chemex, of course, but I'm also, I'm loving the car some of the coffees we have at the moment through the Chemex. For me, it's a great way of brewing. It's a very forgiving way of brewing. It's my go-to method. If I'm at home, that's how I brew. If I'm at work, that's how I brew. Um, the only time I use anything else, really, is if I'm trying to get something different out of the coffee. And having a little bit of a holiday from Chemex, or I'm traveling. Um, you know, if they could make a foldable Chemex, um, I would definitely travel with that too. Um, I, I, I think it's a great brew method. And what it does with these pulp naturals, it gives that, bod that body, that cleanness, that sweetness, without being overpowering in any way. It becomes balanced. Um, I just think it's a really great way of balancing out the coffee. Those are my, some of my favourite coffees I've had in a long time, but that, by far the best. <coughs> Delicious. I, I can drink Brazil espressos all day long. All day long. Right, I'm done. Um, I will see you in a week's time when I will be in the US of A. Uh, please do tune in for that one. Uh, if your subscription is coming to the end or you are thinking of renewing for the first time, next week is definitely the time to renew. Um, it's going to be an amazing coffee. Right, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, and do remember, life is definitely too short for bad coffee.